What's up everyone? Welcome to another edition of the Akuma Fund. Today we're talking about um, the spreadsheet I've been developing uh, for analyzing uh, companies in general, but for today we're using it specifically to analyze Atlantica Yield, um, my, the only stock holding I have currently in my portfolio. Um, I realized I didn't know anything. <laughs> like I, I, I know I need to learn a lot more and I was talking with uh, Dara Collins. He said, I'm sorry man. Have you seen Atlantic Yield's balance sheet? It's not great. They have made losses almost every year. I replied with, on paper they lose money. Free cash flow is a better way to track what their business model. Which I believe is true, because uh, on paper Atlantic Yield is like the, sh the shittiest company ever. Like, uh, it's a terrible company on paper. Like, if you're just looking at like income and all that stuff. Like net income. Like, I don't even think they post. I mean, we can I can check really quick. Yeah, look, uh, on paper they make very little money. Look at that EPS of like 0.27, it's pay and it's paying on dividend like, like 0.4. But uh, you know, actually, this is actually pretty good stuff. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah, they they they're really bad when it comes to earnings. And then I he said I, he said that, and I said, to be honest, currently it's overvalued with a price to free cash flow ratio of like 23. Let's zoom in a little bit. And I responded with, TBH, it's currently overvalued with a price to free cash flow ratio of like 23. It's been creeping up even though, yes, free cash flow isn't even growing, stagnant, and the stock will experience a drop, will, will experience a drawback. I'll be honest, I need to get better at valuation. For AY, a good price is, is any price to free cash flow under 20, which right now it's not. Since I'm a long-term dividend investor and believe the company will free up cash flow over time, even with no more acquisitions due to debt amortization, so long term, I'm bullish and don't mind a high valuation now due to its high dividend yield and strong long term strategy. And I said, please poke some holes in my reasoning. Then he rec he said, no, okay, that that makes that makes sense. And then he said, have I checked out Sykes Buffett's book series, which I haven't, and I will check that out after I make this video. And I said, thank you for that. Thank you for the recommendation. So if we go to check out the dividend tracker, um, I put. I, I want to develop a, a way to analyze stocks consistently and clearly and you know create some type of uh, rhythm 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 rhythmic madness right when it comes to um, all the stock stuff because the stock stuff can get really complicated real fast and really just kind of makes you think like damn I don't know anything so what I did was uh, I took uh, all the different quarters and I tossed up the calf D the dividend payout ratio then I averaged um, the calf D out. Um, that's what this number is here. Um, basically, just rounding it out, and then here's the dividend payout to kind of compare that against the cash available for distribution. Um, and then we go down here. This is uh, this is dividends per share, the percentage increasing change over time. Um, this is uh, stock price to get the market cap, multiplying the stock price by uh, how many. How many how many shares there are in existence, getting the market cap. So that way we could use the market cap and compare that to the calf D and get the calf D to price ratio. Which I don't even know if this is something that people actually use, but at least this way, if we're using, if we, if, 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 if I think calf D is the most important thing when it comes to uh, Atlantic yield or yield codes in general, then finding a good pr calf D to price ratio is, is one way to um, understand when the, when the stock is, is either overvalued or undervalued. Um, one mistake I see a lot of people do is they'll um, they'll just look at the stock price and see oh it's gone down oh it's gone up, but they're not really tracking the numbers behind that. And if you're not tracking the numbers behind that, I think that uh, you're kind of um, you're blind for sure. You're definitely blind. Um, anyways, so if we go back up here and I I put all these these uh, charts here to kind of be able to tell the story of uh, the story, you know the story of all of this company. So at IPOs and you know IPOs are can get very hectic and very crazy very quickly. Um, all you have to do is just look at um, I mean I don't even know I don't even check out IPO anymore but IPOs are always misread I think and it's good I think um, unless you're I mean I can be wrong but I think it's always good to stand on the sidelines when it comes to IPOs um, just because you, you just don't know anything. I mean, I don't know anything um, about this stuff. And if I wanted to be on that, if I wanted to hop on the IPO train, I should have caught it before it even got to the point where it was public. Anywho, it IPOs and it shoots up in value and basically it crashes due to some issues 
with their partner in Abengoa. Um, it crashes to a minimum uh, to a top of like 16, then slowly starts, starts to climb back up. Um, that's what the stock price does. But if we look here to CAF D, if we look here to CAF D to price ratio, basically this is a ca uh, cash available dist for distribution as it compared to a ratio of the market cap or the uh, how much this how much the the consensus of the market thinks this stock is worth in the beginning super high calf d but they raised the dividend very quickly so it went back and shot down to be very low but then they experienced a lot of issues and the calf d shot back up and then they solved those issues and then calf d went back down and then from here you know they've it started to uh to get gain more of a consistent rhythm to it where they they keep calf d in well either the, the the stock market keeps the CAFD ratio um, in between this, uh, I think, yeah, 60 and uh, 45. And so that's the range that, that the market likes to keep uh, this company in when it comes to CAFD. Here's a close-up version of, of CAFD ratio, taking out a lot of the, the very, very hectic and crazy um, data from the IPO and the immediate aftermath after the IPO. So this is the Atlantic Eagle that we know today. Um, this is this is a very clear representation of what the market likes to get this company at, right? Another thing I would like to do add to this is um, adding some type of dividend yield to price calculator, or just you know, just plotting the dividend yield or something and putting it on the graph. Um, but but uh, yeah, this is the CAFD over time, and the reason why I bring up CAFD is because CAFD is basically the dividends. If you, if you the, the cash, this is a yield co, and they're they're required to. To to to, uh, to send out 90% of any um, I don't even know if it's net income or free cash flow or I don't I need to I, I need to figure this out but I, I'm pretty sure it's free cash flow in, in the form of dividends okay so what happens is um, this this gray line here is the averaged out this is the smooth line this is probably the most important line in this data the blue is the quarterly data. And then the orange uh, for a cash flow for distribution, and the orange is the dividends that are being paid out. So as we can see here, that in that huge lump up that we that we see in the stock price, it followed the CAF D, and then the CAF D went down um, due to some uh, in-house issues, I believe, with uh, you know with, with Amango and such. And then wait, is Amango even the right company? I could be getting all of this mixed up. But yeah, shoots back down to low because they're starting to. Um, they, they need to lower CAF D to, to have uh, flexibility. Um, then they figure things out, and then the CAF D shoots back up. I mean, I don't even really know what's going on here, but um, yes, uh, as you can see, there's a huge lump in CAF D, uh, but there's this huge drawback, and then they realize we need to calm things down a little bit, and then they start to slowly raise the dividend over time until around Q2 2017. You can see a consistent pattern of growth along with a consistent growth in dividends and if you compare this gray line to this orange line there's a good gap in between and um, I believe that's the 10% that they're taking home um, to reinvest back into the business but uh, as you can I'm, I'm, it's very like this back here all of this jumbled lines that look like they have no correlation to each other this is chaos this is uncertainty but once you look at Q2 onwards you start to see a very consistent pattern developing and this is what I like to see as a dividend investor consistent pattern of growth consistent uh, you know what I'm saying just I love that it, it, it gets my uh, <laughs> gets my pussy wet <laughs> so as we can see here we have uh, dividends per share and um, we can see the dip percentage and change as you can see here, they, they had to cut the dividend 80% and they raised it back up and they've been bringing it back up ever since but uh this here is is like i said is that chaos but as you can see here qu quarter over quarter they've been increasing that dividend and lately uh, you know three percent increase uh, five percent increase three percent increase i mean those are some good numbers but uh, as you can see here that the trend is that the, the dividends um the ratio of it increasing is, is slowing over time which makes sense because they, um, if you look back to the other CAFD chart, they had a lot of excess and then they had to, they raised, decided to raise it back up slowly. But uh, like I was saying to the guy, um, you know, uh, even if they make no more acquisitions, you know, I would prefer them to be conservative. I want them to be conservative. 
they are being conservative i appreciate that they're, they're just thinking long term they, they say you know what we have long contracts we have contracts that that with debt debt level uh projects that amortize amortize over time we have um, good relationships with different governments we're going to make um, acquisitions when we think that it's it's the right move to do uh, i appreciate that you know because i want stability i want no craziness I, I i'm not investing in this company because of any craziness I, i'm investing in this company because of consistent dividend high dividend you know consistent growth and um, I'm, 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 I'm really uh, excited about that, actually. Well, I hope you guys learned something. Um, I definitely had a lot of fun creating this, uh, this uh, making these calculations and comparing these ratios and using Excel to, to, to help me with my analysis. I hope you guys learned a lot. Um, this is the Stock Analyzer version 1. Um, version 2, uh, probably make some slight uh, adjustments, including a dividend yield, dividend yield uh, over time um, would be really, really cool, because um, that's how I used to analyze um, stocks, I just go to the dividend yield, because I figured if the underlying business is the same, the stock price goes up and down, uh, dividend yield is, is another really good way to buy stock, but um, we'll see, uh, I'm really happy with this, um, I think it could definitely get improved over time. I'm going to do some research on that. Any recommendations? Shoot them in the comments below. What should I add? Uh, what can I improve? Um, yeah. Anyways, guys, thank you very, very much for watching the video. This has been Emmanuel Ardenia showing you guys my stock analyzer version 1. And I'm out.